Robert Dare Triplex, uh, located at 10484th Street, Maru. Okay, let's try this one more time. What we have in front of you is a request for number of modifications to a prior approval uh, that the Commission made in October of 2004 for a project that included uh, creating two units in an existing structure and constructing one new detached unit. Uh, the modifications are at several levels for, one, for the existing house, for the new proposed structure, as well as for modifications of conditions of approval and uh, certain site changes. So I'm going to go take them one by one, and then I'll have a summary table in the end uh, that will have all, all the proposed modifications uh, summarized. I'll start with the main house. The main house includes uh, creating two units. One, uh, which was originally a basement, becomes a first floor, and the second unit is on the second level and the attic. Uh, in order to uh, create the basement level into a viable unit, uh, the past approval included lifting uh, the floor by four feet uh, so that the existing structure would have a 35 feet height. Uh, height and that required a variance. Uh, on further stru structural calculations, the city's plan check engineer determined that the floor needed to be raised an additional 18 inches uh, in order to accommodate clearance from the exterior foundation. As this change, is, change in height is triggered by a building code requirement, a staff is recommending approval and this would bring the total height of the existing building to 36.5 feet. Yeah. Earlier it was 35 feet. The second uh, proposed uh, modification to the main house that the applicant is requesting is to do with external stairs on the east side of the property line, right here. There used to be an existing stairs, which was this, uh, which the commission wanted it removed. This has been closed. This is a covered porch, and there's no external entrance to it. What the, uh, what the applicant now wants is a rear stairs. It will uh, access the unit on the second floor. And so you enter through here, and you come in, and in order to enter the upper level of the unit, which is the attic, you would have to go in and then go up. So the only way you could access the attic would be coming, accessing the second, uh, second level. The reason uh, that the applicants wants this external stairs, which would be the second one, is so that the unit would have a uh, easier access to the yard. Uh, eventually, uh, the applicant wants to convert this into two condos and, what you s and create some open space for the two units. So what you have labeled as A would be uh, designated for uh, one of the units and B for the lower unit. And that's the reason why um, Mariah, I'd like some clarity here on this. Is, uh, our understanding is there hasn't been a, a um, map submittal to condo the project. So this is for apartment. This would that be is three, correct. This would be apartment units, not uh, condominiums. Right. But his intention eventually is to convert it into condos. But he has not applied for the map. That is well, I understand we have a moratorium on right. that right and, now. Yeah. Thank you. So that's the reason. F these are the two main changes, and this would be sort of the east elevation. That's the existing stairs line that's gone, but there'll be new stairs right here, and the height is uh, 36 and a half feet. And what's the distance between the new stairway and the east property? Three feet, uh, and uh, that's indicated. And the current width is two feet. Is that correct? The current width of the stairs, uh, of the existing yeah. external stairs, it's a little more than two feet. So it's shown here. I mean, this 
the setback would be actually three and a half feet of the proposed rear stairs. And, and the required setback for five feet is three feet? Three feet. Is two feet or three feet? Three feet. Okay, because the, on the other side uh, of the property, uh, it appears to be only two feet existing. That's existing. But if you're remodeling, don't you have to bring it up to code? Uh, no, he's not changing the footprint of the building. It's only interior remodel. It's when there's a change in footprint is when uh, you have to bring it up to the code uh, or any new addition that uh, Well, this is certainly add. a new addition because you're adding a whole floor right. to the building. Well, yeah. uh, you're not adding a new floor here. Uh, the floors were existing. There used to be five units here, and they all are getting sort of now, I mean, uh, legalized in terms of building code as well. So you're not raising the elevation of the roof at all? Uh, you're raising the height of the building. The, f the basement floor is getting raised uh, four plus uh, one and a half, so five and a half feet. But that's not the footprint. That's but that's the not the footprint. That's not no. footprint. But you are changing the roof line because there are dormers that are being added which are ex increasing the square footage. It might not be the footprint per se, right. but it is changing the building envelope. Well, correct? remember that this application has already been approved by the commission, and what it, the changes that are before you are the things that Miro is describing. If I if I understand correctly, the 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 overall volume and shape of this building is not changing, except that it's being raised an extra foot, foot and a half. Is that right? Over what was previous. Five and a half feet. Five and a half feet over what was previously approved. So what it was was oh, so a foot and a half from what was previously approved. A foot and a half above what was previously approved. So you're just looking at an incremental foot and a half increase over what you have already approved. And that requested as a result of the plan check by the building department. Uh, right. Not as a result of, and are not initiated by the applicant. That's correct. And could I ask for an additional clarification that this is still within the 30-foot height, li height limit? No. No, it's not. There is a height variance before you. Which was oh, okay. approved by the commission as well. At that was already level. approved, right? But it's increasing. Yeah. It's increasing. The variance is increasing. Changing this the variance. Would, would and now it's going up another foot. But that's, that was at the request of the city for code compliance, correct? Right. right. That is correct. But this is for the front building or the main? Or the this building? is the rear building. The rear building. So, so those dormers that you were talking about, which if I recall correctly, those were already part of your previous approval. Right. This, nothing so happened. the only difference with those is that they're just going up another foot and a half yeah, into the air than they were before. And Maru, the, um, the balcony in the middle of the, yes, that used to have, the st well, still has a stairway off there. That comes out of an existing stairway that goes upstairs. If you go back to the floor plan, you have to go up one step through the bedroom to get to the landing of that. You see, the, yes, there's a door. So you basically go into an enclosed stairway area, up a step, and then you're going to drop down to a balcony. Well, what is the purpose of that? The applicants wants it. And But that was not in previously yeah. that entire feature, the stairway, the deck, everything came off in our previous approval. As a condition of approval. Yes. Right. Right. To make sure that there was not an opportunity to create a separate stairway to that landing to provide a separate entrance to the upstairs attic space. That is correct. Right. Because the... I mean, this, you would not reach the landing without being news. inside by accessing it through here or coming through here. The access to the landing, there's no external access to the landing. To the balcony, for sure. To the balcony. Without a new stairway, if they take the existing stairway off. They're taking the existing stairway off, off of here. I understand yeah. in the plans. But previously, we had a condition that right. completely closed that wall off so that, that no correct. point in the future there could ever be a separate unit created in the attic space. And so there is a change in the plans that would then retain that open doorway out to what's now proposed as a balcony in right. this revised have, Yeah, then you would have to build stairs. Yes. Yeah. Okay.
Okay. Now to the changes in the new house, uh, the new detached unit, which is in the front. Uh, there is a marginal uh, increase in footprint uh, of the new detached house. It used to be, uh, it was approved at 21 by 21 feet, now it's 21 by 22. There's also a marginal increase in the height uh, from 29 feet to 30 feet. Uh, the modified flow plans would allow essentially creating a, a slightly larger uh, third level, which is the bedroom and bathroom. So it's going to increase from what was 346 square feet to 462 square feet. And there used to be a balcony that, uh, that was proposed, which is no longer the case now. Uh, and so in terms of design, this is essentially how it's going to be looking at. Uh, the applicant is also requesting uh, the option that the roof material of the new building be either metal or composition shingles. Uh, as approved, uh, we are requiring that it only be composition shingles, and staff maintains that composition shingles uh, should be used and not, the option of the metal should not be approved. Uh, in terms of exterior changes on the site, uh, the applicant is proposing to proposing a six foot fence within the front yard setback. Most of it is. Uh, where four and a half feet e is allowed maximum for an open work fence and three feet for solid fences. So this six foot uh, fence would require variance. Uh, the rationale for the request is uh, essentially to enclose the open space between the front parking space and the main house and also to provide security uh, to the residents. Uh, staff uh, recommends uh, denial for this proposal and the variance because it believes that uh, both can be done uh, by a four and a half foot fence. Uh, in terms of uh, mo modifications to the conditions of approval, the applicant is requesting uh, that all new window trims be either aluminum or wood and uh, as the condition reads now, it is, um, I'm sorry, as the condition reads now, it is uh, vinyl or wood, and he wants it. Okay, I'm, I'm No, it, it's currently aluminum or wood, and he's requesting vinyl or wood. Thank you. That's exactly it. Another condition is uh, regarding detailed landscape plan. Uh, there's a, a sentence which says planter strips between parking spaces in front of the garage and paved wheel strips with planting in between for all uncovered parking spaces. Uh, the applicant wants uh, to change this, and his proposal is to create uh, essentially a brick paper pad here, and the rest of it would be concrete. Uh, staff recommendation for this is also not approval for this change. Uh, we don't believe that it would uh, it would uh, it would bring a desired what was desired with the original condition, which was basically to reduce the parking lot. Uh, effect in the front yard. So, um, this table is also on your staff report. It's basically the repetition of that. So, if you can't sort of read it very well on the overhead, you can refer to it. Refer to it in your um, in, in your staff report. So, if there are any questions? Um, yeah, Maru, I have a question about the, the, the little table here. Um, I don't see this balcony listed. That's a new modification, and that's not listed. Right, right. So. But it would be, um, uh, we, would, we, we need to include that. Okay, so is staff recommending a, a, a yes or a no on that? I, I don't see it here. Staff, uh, yeah. Um, Staff would recommend yes, mainly because if the intention is that uh, that in the future uh, there are no additional illegal units uh, are created, it can be done in a number of ways. Whether this helps more than uh, I mean, if he really wants to create illegal units later on, he or the later owners, there are no, you know, he, he 
he can still do it in a number of ways. Uh, whether this prevents, actively prevents him, removal of the stairs, actively prevents him or encourages him, I don't think either way uh, it's, it's going to matter. And if it's, it's something he desires, okay. I don't have a problem with that. On, on that balcony, as I remember, with the stairs, we were less than the required three-foot setback. Now is, even with the stairs removed, is the balcony encroaching into that three, three foot setback uh, or is the balcony beyond three feet from the no, property? The balcony is not encroaching three foot setback. So the, so the furthest east edge of the balcony is three plus feet from three the property line? Three and a half feet. If you look it, uh, at this plan right If you look here. at sheet four there that's okay. on the overhead, it's, it's dimensioned. It's three feet six inches. Right. What, what's the dotted line that goes out another foot? Overhang. That's probably a roof. Oh, okay. Yeah, cover over deck, it says. And that is allowed to encroach into the setback area. And, and looking at those plans, staff doesn't have a question about what this balcony is for, where you have to go through a bedroom, up a step, out a stairway with no relationship to a room to go onto this balcony. Is it a smoking balcony? Or what is this balcony for? I mean, I, my question is about function, how this relates to the design. And, and the previous approval that we had where it was very clear we didn't want it. this was, it was gone. gone away. This was gone. And now they have a whole new separate access, which I think is an improvement. But I'm just curious why staff supports this balcony a to balcony nowhere, nowhere yeah. from not a common space, not a common space, but from the master bedroom through the closet hallway to get to it. I think if you look at the at the floor plan on sheet page. four and then look at the uh, south elevation on sheet six um, and actually also the east elevation on sheet seven you can see how this balcony relates to the rest of the house. Um, I would guess that it, it's labeled on the elevation as a master bedroom deck. And there is an existing door there, I believe. So this is just putting a deck outside the existing door. Yeah, you do have to go through that little hallway and that step to get to it. But it's a way of getting a deck, an exterior deck, without adding any new doors to the outside of the building. Now, it's also conceivable that that deck could in the future serve as a landing to a new staircase that could be constructed on the outside of the building that would provide direct access to that stair internal stairway that goes directly up to the third floor and could conceivably become an independent access to an independent unit on the third floor. That's not what's shown in these plans. And if that modification were proposed in the future, it would require approval of this commission unless it were done illegally. Um, I sense that your concern may be that somebody in the future may do that without seeking permission from the city. Well, but that's not what's proposed right now. An easier solution than that is to merely build a wall in the stairway in the kitchen that separates the stairway from the kitchen and put a door going out to That's the bottom of the stairway. And then they can come up the existing stairway, come in this. About yeah, you know. Yeah. This one. Come this up one the existing one? back stairway oh, oh, okay. to the porch, go in that door, Just what you've done. and then put another wall along the oh. side of the stairway. I see. And then you can get it much more easily. You can do it inside. Nobody can see it. You're saying if they wanted to provide wanted an to, illegal to, third yeah. unit in the future without that would be anybody a hell of knowing. a lot easier way to do it. Uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Except you need to, you'd need two access points. Not if you're making an illegal yeah. unit. Right. You, you don't need two access points from building code point of view for this. This external no, it's stairs. A separate unit. Uh, this issue that uh, Commissioner Cardoza brought up was discussed. I also believe that this can be closed off and, uh, and then in the future uh, the attic would have external you know, uh, access. 
we discussed this, plan, my plan check engineer and I discussed this with the applicant, uh, suggesting that not to have the stairs at all and instead use the stairs for creating as was discussed in the first approval. And, uh, and, there, and it can be done. There are no structural reasons uh, why this cannot be done. Uh, there could be issue, I think, of uh, cost because there's some uh, load-bearing walls that would need to be changed. But structurally, in terms of building code, it can be done. Uh, we had an extensive discussion with the applicant and he insisted um, on having it this way. And uh, well, you know, at some point, we have to make a decision, and uh, and this is the staff recommendation at this point. Yeah, I, I, I don't quite follow that because if you put the stairs by the deck, if you eliminate those stairs and replace them with new stairs that connect to that deck, you still have a direct access from outside up to the third floor, right? But but by the Am by the second floor balcony then you have no direct access to the ground floor. So well, it's a separate unit. That well, is but there is no access. access to the ground yeah. floor. No, you, anyway. you would, I'm sorry, you That's would close, close this off. You'd put a wall here. Yeah. Then so you could then, then you, you could have right. Up, mm -hmm. Because the access to this unit, right. I mean you have a main access right. here. What was the point of moving the stairs to the other location? This yeah, to know. Taking down the existing stairs. Why not just use the existing stairs to get up there? Why have these stairs? These external stairs? It's basically so that they have an easy access to the backyard. Well, they can go out there. Can't they go out their existing stairs down the existing porch into the yes. backyard? From into here? The From the front entrance? No. From the, the area that I've suggested in our, yes, from there going to the backyard going north into the backyard from the exist if you look at the existing floor plan well you're looking at the proposed floor plan right. oh you look existing at the floor existing plan floor plan, plan they it. can drop down just move over to the left the existing floor plan there yeah but that that's that was not those approved. are the stairs that we asked to have then removed. Those are the stairs that but wasn't that right. what you were saying that you and the plan check engineers offered as an alternative maybe i misunderstood See? no we wanted him to not have these stairs at all. Not oh. to have the internal yes. stairs. The entire stairs at all. Oh, 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 oh. And then use this to access the attic. For use internal. This and make it oh. code compliant. So, and not so, have so that so the stairs accessing the attic are at a significant diff distance right. from the stairs that access the outside. So are you saying that the internal stairs oh, to see. the attic were not previously approved? You mean this one? No, the other one in the back. They weren't part the of the interior. No, yeah. This was not part of the. That's new. Th this is new. The inside stairs as well. Yes, that is oh, correct. Okay, so he just moved his ac outdoor access to the attic from the front to the well, back. But didn't he have to have two means of egress from the third floor? It's not large enough. Oh, this so he didn't need that stairway. Right. Mm. Hope well, uh, my my much. my point and my recollection from whenever we first approved this was there was an inspector from the city who came and explained that from the master bedroom into that existing stairway, you have to take a step up into that existing stairwell. From the f floor of the master bed, you have to step up to the, th to the landing of that stairway. And it, you know, in design, it just doesn't make sense. Would well, exist that way now. Yes, that's the existing condition that you would step up out of the master bedroom to the landing of the stairway and then you would step out to the balcony to enjoy the balcony. That's, I guess, my point in the function issue. Well, that balcony is totally being rebuilt anyway. And I presume you have to go up a step to the landing just to get enough steps to get up to the attic. Right, to clear the roof. Yeah. That was it for my questions. <laughs> Were you finished, Maru? Uh, what, what was, what, I guess I, I, might, I might as well muddy the water some more, but um, it, so while we're talking about that deck, adjacent to those attic stairs, would not, if you're 
Build that deck is new, correct? Completely, 100 percent new, right? The front one or the back? The, 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 the front one. There right now. The front, the front one. Oh, that's yeah. being removed. Okay, but no, wouldn't that's no the thing in the landing is there? The, the staircase has been or will be removed. That going down to the ground that and leads so it from there. It will be there. replaced with a new balcony. In keeping with with correct. Jim, in keeping with Jim's right. concern, wouldn't that be better accessed off the bedroom? Why do you? It's going to be a brand new. If it's going to be a brand new balcony, right. and With put the sliders, the sliders, so you could look at the the dumpster next door yeah, or whatever is pretty he's functional to the bedroom. Door. See, the door exists. He doesn't need to move the door. Okay. This is that's my. I, is that your point? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. To enjoy from the master bedroom. Right. And the I'm a little. What is this room that's labeled F R? Front and, room. And, well, room? what is the difference between a front room and a living room? Oh, it was a front parlor. Remember, they used to have two rooms. There was a front parlor and a main parlor. It's the old Detroit front. Yeah, but that, um, I, I mean, to me, it just sort of looked like it could be another bedroom. Mm -hmm. Oh, it, it is. And it could be. It wouldn't be have any impact on terms of parking and all that. Yeah. It won't? Okay. It won't. Okay. The parking limit is two or more bedrooms. But it would be nice to have it accurately labeled if that's the intent to have a bedroom. I mean, we can ask the, the applicant that, but. Does this require uh, sprinklers or not? No. Is it a three-story building or? I'm not sure. No. Oh, it doesn't. <laughs> so are you ready to hear from the applicant? Can you just briefly summarize well, never mind. Thank you, Maru. <laughs> Thanks, Maru. Uh, does the applicant wish to say anything? I think we all have some clarifying questions yes. we want to ask the applicant. I have my plans. Commissioners, how can I clarify your questions? You have questions? Uh, you go first. Ex can you explain to me um, why you want to build a balcony for the existing home, why you want to build a balcony on the east side in a stairwell rather than build it so that you can enjoy it from the room in the house when that balcony does not extend down to the yard area. It doesn't provide access and it's not something, usually when you build a balcony you build it so it can be enjoyed both physically and visually from the structure. This balcony sits in an existing doorway at the base of a stairway that you need to go up and then down to get out to. Why haven't you sited that balcony in the middle of the master bedroom or in the middle of the living room so you can enjoy front room. it? Front room. <laughs> um, so you could actually enjoy it and have a big slider or yeah. large window there. When you're talking about the front room, are you talking about the FR? The FR. Okay, family room? Okay. Oh, family room. Oh, it's a family yeah. room. Is that a uh, fireplace in the corner of it? Yes, that's existing. The, the deck that's off of the master bedroom actually serves two bedrooms because that stair goes up to the attic, which serves another master bedroom. So it's serving two master bedrooms right now. What, what do you mean by serving? Well, the stairs... Go, go down, down the, the stairs, stairs and, and go up the out. step and out to the balcony. And then what? Down the ladder? Is the overhead working? We don't need to turn it off. It there we go. Yeah, okay. It's no, it's working. This stairs <coughs> goes up. Right 
here. Right. Like this would be another this will be another bedroom right there. Right. So this is a four bedroom four bedroom condo. Can you speak into the microphone please? There's a there you go, the portable. This is a four bedroom condo. I thought I built a four bedroom condo because it seems like I'm learning that Emeryville wants families here, so that's why I made it four bedrooms. And this is one bedroom. It goes down and they will have this deck to use. In addition, this master bedroom can also just easily go outside here and have this deck to use. This is a, because it's a four bedroom condo, there's no other open space here. It's very tight. The only space they have is a very small yard that's going to be right here. And, and that's, that's a it. comment I have too. In the staff report, it identifies the purpose of this stairway in the back to provide direct access to the yard, but in your landscape plan, you don't show the yard. You just show the front. So I would request that, uh, that a, a completed landscape plan be submitted to Charlie uh, so that, that staff understands, mm -hmm. you know, what kind of open space you're providing. Mm -hmm. You're talking about this landscape plan here? No, I'm talking about the back of the property where you've ident you say there's a, going to be a, a yard, open space, mm -hmm. for the, the upper unit, and that's why you created that stair, so they would have direct access down to that yard. But yet in your landscape plan, this is such an important feature, I'm just surprised that you don't show that in, in your landscaping and your site plan. Okay. Yeah, actually the landscape plan... They said I can submit that later. It shows Not it on page two of at least the spaces. I, I did show it here. Front it space. just shows the front. It doesn't show the back. Well, it shows A and B, which is the, at the He's talking about the dimensions of the yard, but not. Yeah, I mean, it shows where it's fenced, so, yeah. yeah, but nothing, nothing that's in it. You're asking for the details of the landscape plan. Well, yeah, I mean, yes, you know, you, you, you're justifying that stairway to provide direct access to this yard open yeah, space area, right. and you don't show it on your site plan. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. It'd be mm -hmm. nice to have a completed site plan. Mm -hmm. the, the rear yard is all concrete, as I recall. <laughs> Isn't that the condition of the rear yard right now? Correct. Was, did you have any plans to do anything other than put in a fence, a um, new fence around it? Yes. But as I said, um, the planner stated that once this all get approved, it will require a, landscape, a full landscape plan. So I'm waiting for this all to get complete, approved before I do my complete plans. Is that, is that the case that we approve something and then they submit a, a full landscape plan later? A f detailed landscape plan is required before we sign off on the building permit. Right. And we have not signed off on the building permit yet. Right. That's a standard condition of but approval. But the commissioners have made it very clear that at least at a conceptual level, we want to start seeing landscape plans for the site. Yeah, you have. And, and this I, is I, incomplete, and in I, my opinion. And my memory is that the last time this project was here, we had significant concerns about landscape and wanted to see more detail. Well, he did. I, they're actually in the old conditions of approval. There's some evidence of that because it says it's a minimum of three trees and 15 shrubs, and we were talking about that earlier. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So it feels like we, we still don't have even what we've been asking for on this. <clears throat> well, I think that policy was clarified for us after you had already approved this previously. So perhaps when it came back for these modifications, we should have clarified with the applicant at that time that the Commission is now requiring more complete preliminary landscape plans. Uh, I guess we failed to do that. And I believe that the applicant was aware that there was a need, that a desire that the Commission wanted to see a more detailed landscape plan. Well, there, before we go to the public hearing, I. I did have one other question, and that was 
um, to the applicant about the new stair system and if you can explain why you're not simply using the existing stairs and saving them money of constructing a whole new stair system that gets you into the same yard area for this second, third floor occupant. Why are you constructing this whole new sta partially internal stair system? Well, frankly, because um, I've been told so many times I can't do this. And every time I try to do something, I, you tell me I can't do it again. So I was afraid to leave it there. And the, I guess the other thing is putting it towards the back anyway, it is more of a <clears throat> easier access because the kitchen is more of a common area where the family will gather. If they want to go out and barbecue, it would be from here they'll go out to barbecue. It's not going to be from the bedroom, they'll go out to barbecue. Right. So but part of at least the internal decision was that you didn't want people going to the third floor to have to go through that master bedroom to get up to the third floor. The second floor master bedroom, if you look at your plan, you didn't want people to have to walk through that bedroom to get up the existing stairway, right? Right, that's why you're constructing that internal stairway to the third floor because you did not want people to have to walk through the existing master bedroom to the existing stairway to get to the third floor. No, well, that, that helps, but the other reason is this stair is not in compliance. It's not, doesn't have the compliance width. So I have to build a new stair. I'm required to build a new stair. So is that stair going away then? No, I'm keeping this one because this one, well, it, it serves, I mean, I don't have to have two exits from, I, I don't have to have two exits from the attic, but it helps serve <coughs> as convenience for this master bedroom in terms of convenience to go down to the deck and also if there is any fire up here. This is a, it's a large building, so I thought two would be fine. Anyway. Um, Maria, I just want to get, I want to make sure I understand this. Uh, this, this stair is, is not in compliance. And if it's substandard, then why is it staying? Because he wants to. He doesn't need it. If he has the external stairs, the building code does not require him to have that stairs. At the same time, there's nothing in the building code or planning code which which authorizes us to make him remove those stairs. Okay. Okay, thank you. So as long as he has one compliant, if he has a second that is not compliant, that's okay. That is As that, long that is as correct. he has one that is. Okay. Right. Just, just to explain, because um, I'm a little concerned you're going to think I'm doing this to make an illegal unit. Um, I'm doing this because if I had to make this stair compliance, I would have to yeah, okay, knock quick. this whole wall down. <laughs> Sorry. And this bedroom has cold ceilings. So I would have to knock this whole wall down, the, all the whole ceiling down, rebuild it, which would be very difficult. So it's a, it's a three-way process, demolition, rebuild, and then reconstruction. Here is simply construction. It's a one-stage process versus a three-stage process here. Will, on the second floor, will there be a door between the master bedroom on the second floor and that stairway? There's no door shown in your improvement plan, but I assume you're, you're going to have a door either at the top or the bottom of the... Just will there be a door there? Uh, yes, I can put a door here. I mean, that's your I intention, though, I isn't it? I didn't think about it, but yes, no, I can put a door there. There's an existing door there, isn't there? Uh, right now, there is an existing door, yes. But there will be no door at the st top of the stairs on the third floor? I have another landscape site plan question. Um, and in the front, between the phase one and the phase two, at the, at the ground floor level of phase two for that unit, you, you're showing double doors. Is that whole area going to be paved? You know, where you, you come in and there's, it looks like there's some turf or some sort of uh, uh, treatment and there's a walkway. Is that <coughs> this, yeah, is, is that area all to the right of the stairs between the phase one and phase two and where the entry is to the, the ground level of phase 
One, is that going to be paved? Is all of that going to be paved? When you say paved, what do you mean by paved? Well, that's what I'm asking. Is sidewalk or what, what oh. sort of treatment are you well, proposing it, in I'm there? I'm thinking it's just a hard surface. I don't know what kind of hard surface. So it'll all be impervious. Um, Why would it not be long? It's existing cement, right? Like the backyard, it it's existing, existing cement. cement. Right. So your idea is just to keep the existing condition there. Um, well, when I get the detailed plans, um, it may change, but I know this is what I can do right now. There's a, I have, I have a lot of utilities going through here right now, and I don't want to commit to anything. Um, on this plan, you can see where I'm showing the sewer line. Here's the sewer here. The sewer line runs all the way through to here. The water line runs from here all the way through the back, and it also goes sideways. Um, I'm still trying to locate the gas meters, but my two gas meters are right here. And they're, they're probably going from here outside to the street because my gas meters are not on the sidewalk. They're somewhere outside on the street. And at the same time, um, I will be having new electrical lines coming in. I don't know if I'll be required to have underground electrical or overhead electrical. So I'm trying not to commit to doing anything landscaping-wise here until I can really get my utilities more cleared up. Mr. Dude, then, but you are comfortable that you don't have, where you've cited this phase two building, mm -hmm. you're clear of all these utility lines. If you, I, I guess I want to make sure I understand that you've located these lines mm -hmm. and you've located this phase two building mm -hmm. in response to avoiding the lines, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Well, even if the <coughs> plumbing, even if I have plumbing lines coming through here, I have no choice but to alter it anyway, because my foundations is going to... Including the existing sewer line through there. That's right. Well, there wouldn't be a sewer line because it flows to the back, right? No, the sewer the line goes to the flows street. to the front. Oh, flows to the front. Oh, okay. And you believe it's there along the east property line somewhere in that it vicinity? Is, it is along here. It is along the east property line somewhere. So you may have to relocate it. Correct. And most likely into the three-foot setback between the property line and the building. It's right about there. Where the one tree is that's proposed in the frontage. This one. Right. That's right. Yeah, Charlie? Was there a question about uh, undergrounding utility wires, about whether or not that would be required? No. We were just, I was just trying to get a sense of. So the applicant raised that. Right. Yeah. Well, there is an existing condition of approval that the Commission already approved and that is not really up for discussion tonight, which says all new and existing on-site electrical and communi communication lines shall be placed underground. So that's been a requirement since this was originally approved. I remember that discussion. And it's a standard condition. Yes. No, I was just talking about did he have a comfort level where he located his phase two structure in relation to, to not knowing perhaps where all the existing lines are uh, underground on his property. Okay. But he in has indicated that they'll be relocated if there is a conflict, correct? Yeah, pretty much I, the location of the property takes preference over the locations of the utilities. I can't, I can't adjust my this property anywhere else so the utilities will have to go. Was there any uh, color requirements on the building specified at the time on the prior approval? Or is that something that's... Mm -hmm. Colors? No, I don't think so. Not just within the jurisdiction? We just have a standard condition about submitting color and material samples to staff mm -hmm. before building permit. <coughs> Do you, at our last meeting, you had requested a metal roof and staff is again recommending against that. And we suggested that if you wanted to continue with that as an option, that you bring a sample and explain exactly what you wanted as a preference to the composite roof. Did you give up that idea of a metal roof? Um, actually, I, I got too tied up. I, I was thinking I was going to bring that sample when the permits are to be approved or at the time I'm in construction, I was thinking at that point. But um, it's at this point because, um, well, at this point, it's, 
I'm not not as concerned about that anymore. It costs too much. I I was willing at that time to if it makes that neighborhood better, I was willing to spend more on it. It's actually gonna cost me about seven thousand dollars more just to put metal roof. And I'm thinking twice, well, why do I want to do that now? Um, if you're open to me bringing samples at the time this actually gets constructed, if you're still open no. to the metal roof and you think it will improve the neighborhood, I, I can consider yeah. that. Yeah, we're, we're going with what staff recommends. Well, and, uh, this is our opportunity to review. Um, from this point on, assuming you do get approval, then it, it's basically staff that would make any other final decisions for the final plan. So this is it for our shot at this yeah. review. Um, if, if if you feel comfortable to let it be an option, I can present it to staff and let them decide which one they like better. And but then the last question I had was about the six foot fence in the front yard setback. And I see you do have an elevation on sheet four of five. I appreciate that you revised your plans and that you took the fence out of the side yard area that I was concerned would block the neighbors and you now have shrubs there instead of fencing that um, I think actually was going to require a variance. Um, I see you've got a new wood fence along the west property line up to the frontage. Can you explain? There's, it's summarized in the staff report. Can you explain why you need a six foot fence there instead of a standard four foot fence in your front yard area? Um, yes, it's, um, again, I'm making this, condo A is a four bedroom, Con uh, well, it's not a condo yet, I, but uh, unit A is four bedroom, unit B, which is in the basement, is three bedrooms. Now, in a f this four bedroom is about 2,200 square feet. You're not going to get a, a single there, or you're not going to get a couple there. You're going to have a family there, which is exactly what this is designed for, because I'm designing for what, I, what I'm learning that Emory Real really wants is families. You're going to have children there. And I know that they're going to want security for their children to play outside. <coughs> um, I see in a lot of schools, they have at least a six-foot fence and the six foot fence, I think it's probably because nobody can reach over and grab a child and lift them up. I, I think that's the reason. I, I, but I know they're at least six feet tall and all the, all the fences in the school yards I see. So it's really for a very security reason. And um, I think the open fence, if it's open, Miru told me it, it can be four and a half feet. So. I'm just asking for it to be six feet because I know um, families won't be any more comfortable with anything less. And to staff, we had a question at the last meeting about how much of the six foot fencing that was proposed in the front yard was part of the requested variance. And that we were told, I think, that there was a only the fencing within the front setback was at issue with regard to the variance. Even though some of this fencing is six feet high, it's in the front of the building, but falls outside the front yard setback. Is that, I wanted to confirm that that's the case, that anything outside the front setback from the street that is over four and a half feet doesn't need the variance. Right. That's Even right. though it's all in the front yard. Well, it depends on what you call front yard. In but front of the, the zoning building. ordinance doesn't actually use the term setback. They, it, the zoning ordinance used it, <laughs> uses the term yard. And the front yard, quote unquote, is the required setback area. So you can have area that's in the front of the house that is not within the zoning, what the zoning ordinance defines as the front yard. But that would include fencing not only that runs along the frontage of the property, but also that runs along the side property lines 
to the full depth of that required front yard. So, is so it sh in this case, okay. well, the front yard is defined as the average of the front setbacks of the two adjacent properties, mm -hmm. which in this case works out to what? About 12 feet or so? So, well, whatever it is, say it's 12 feet. Um, then the anything that's within 12 feet of the front property line, whether it's parallel to the street or perpendicular to the street, would be subject to that. And by the way, it's four and a half feet is for an open fence, a fence that is 90% open, such as chain link or wrought iron, can be four and a half feet. A solid fence in that area can be no higher than three feet. Oh. And so then when you go further back from the front yard area, you can go up to six feet. Does the and that's for either open or? Yeah, open or closed. Right. Closed, three feet. Open, four and a half. And then back from the front yard, six feet for either. So is there some on one of these plans that shows the variance zone, how much of this fencing was within well, the Well, I don't think there is, but if you look at the sheet two of sheet five. Sheet two, and if you look at the houses on either side and kind of and, and look at where they're set back from the street. Where it says new six six foot wide. Actually, let me go to the overhead. Well, sheet two of eight shows eighteen foot setback. The staff, re well, that's 18 feet to the front of the house. The staff report said that the front yard setback would be 18 and a half feet because of the average between the two houses. So the front part of the fence on the west property line would require a variance, and the place where it sort of juts out and meets up with the staircase would require a variance, but mm -hmm. the segment on the west, the perpendicular to the property line at the western side. About half of it would. Is probably outside. It's, the line is, you know, roughly here. If you look at this right here, the setback of this house, and then the setback of this one over here, the required setback on this parcel is the average of those two, which is somewhere in this vicinity. Okay. So any fence that's in front of that line, this, 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 this needs a variance if it's over six feet tall. Yeah. Is that clear? And in fact, if it's over three feet, if it's closed. Yeah, if it's over three feet, if it's a closed fence, and if it's over four and a half feet, at, I'm sorry, did I say over six feet? I, I misspoke. Yeah. If it's over three feet, if it's solid, and if it's over four and a half, if it's open, it needs a variance. Right. And what about the trellis? That requires a variance, too. Uh, yeah, we don't have a provision for that in the code. That would allow that. <clears throat> and and the fence design on the west property line, that solid six foot fence would carry all the way to the sidewalk there, and s along the west side of that western parking stall, or is that also supposed to be the, the semi open design? No, the all the way to the sidewalk. So that would need a variance as well. That's part of the variance. Yeah. Well, then this is more than 18. But you're not suggesting that that be your open, ivy-covered, ivy covered, wired fence? That's going to be a solid fence? Okay. That's what you'd like to see is a solid fence there? Somebody said 18 and a half. This area from I see. this area to here can be ivy-covered. Coming towards the street, I can't make that. I cannot get ivy-covered. You, you, you need to speak into the microphone. <laughs> um, from the center to the corner of this uh, adjacent building can be ivy covered, but from the center towards the street cannot be ivy covered because, well, unless the ivy grows from here over, it'll be okay, but I, I cannot put planters here. Why it's, not? It's, so it, the it'll it'll, it'll be in the way of the, the mm -hmm. car okay. parking, parking and coming out. <clears throat> well, that's let's open question. the public hearing here. <laughs> ah, <laughs> okay, let's open the public. We have to do this officially. 
Uh, uh, seeing no members in the audience that wish to speak on this item, I shall close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission. Is there, am I able to bring up a couple things? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, the, well, I guess we discussed one of them, is the six-foot fence. Uh, it does require a variance. Um, my option, my, if I, well, I want you to understand. Well, first of all, I support whatever you guys like. You know, I know you want <laughs> trees, I know you want to open, I support all that. I'm not against it and I'm not objected to it. But my reason for having this fence is, is purely because if I'm going to sell this as a condo to families, I know they want security. The option I have is maybe I just won't put one there and I'm going to just credit them back and let them do what they want to do. Um, they may decide they want to build a larger one further back and not have to do anything with the uh, variance. In which case they would need to come for us and right. fight, fight their own battle. Right. Well, I mean, if they build it back, as Charlie said, where it's not required, they could build it however high they like. Why don't you propose doing that? Pardon me? Why don't you propose doing that so you don't need a variance if, if the security, the, uh, the security of a fence is so important to uh, the attractiveness of, of a, a potential owner purchasing a unit. Why don't you just make, why don't you locate the fence so that you don't need a variance? Because that would mean you have a very large parking lot in front. Oh, okay. No, you put and, landscaping and you won't, and you won't in have the common space that you have here right now. So I, I want to do something nice here. You know, I'm trying to make something really nice that you like and that would also um, accomplish the need for these families to have security for their children out here. And so if I do something that I'm trying to, if this looks nice to you, you know, and you think that's, you think this would be better than what they might do, then I, you know, I'm willing to do something like this. Or as I said, I just won't do anything, let them build something and it might be uglier and you have a large, and there'll be a large parking lot in front. One thing I want to point out is I think at this time, we, these are not condos. There's no condo map that's been submitted. And in fact, the city has a moratorium um, at least through November against condo conversion. So I know we're talking about potential owners and common areas, what they would want, but at, you know, at, you don't have a condo in front of you, is what okay. I would say. Okay, thanks for that clarification, Carol. And if it came back to us as a condo, we, we would have to review that, including how the land was going to be subdivided and well, depending on the nature of the ordinance. On the nature of the ordinance, and certainly that's what's being contemplated is an ordinance that requires um, planning commission review. Um, the second thing I want to go over, well, just let you know, I not worry about doing condos this year anyway. I decided if I ever get the approval here, I won't do it till next year. Um, the other thing I like to go over is I had a requirement to do planter strips in the, in the front. Planter strips in this area here. Um, again, I, I have no objections and I support what you're doing because I like the idea also. But this is um, an area where it's really not practical to put planter strips here. And in addition, it's not practical, it's a tripping hazard. Um, a tripping ha this tripping hazard is going to be a liability issue. Now, understand that if I do a planter strip here, it's going to only cost me a few hundred dollars. What I like to suggest is I don't want to get into any liability issues, and I know it will be a liability issue. I, you, you have only one area in Emeryville right now that has planners, and that's on 53rd Street. And I went there, and I know I can see, I even parked my car up there, opened my door, got out, and I, I can even trip easily on it. So I know it's a liability issue. I, and it's, like I said, it only cost me $300 to do this planner strip. So I'm not avoiding, trying not to make this place look beautiful or avoid any cost. 
what I'd like to suggest is I'm going to be doing a lot more than just a planter strip. I can try to make this area larger so it doesn't look like all concrete to you. And I'm going to run the planter strip in front of the entryway area here. In addition, I'll make ivies climb up to the trellis here. The other thing I can do is, originally this was a small flagstone path. I'm enlarging it about three times now to remove some of the concrete. And the last thing is I can possibly put a tree right here as long as my sewer line is not, is, doesn't get in the way. So everything I'm doing here is going to be, you know, it'll probably be about $3,000 here versus $300. And I'm doing this just because I want to avoid the liability issue. Um, that, and um, where it's in the change in the um, in the change in the plans, it said I needed to put three trees. Well, I I got rid of th there was originally three trees right here. I I'm thinking I'd like to put a whole row of bamboos instead. So. I just wanted to alter that three trees to rows of bamboos or evergreen shrubs. Is there anything else? That it? Um, I think. So. Yep. I think that was. That was it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Do I hear a motion? No, no, let's have a discussion. Okay. I'm not resolved here. Okay. <laughs> what, what do you want to discuss? <laughs> How? I'm ready to go. <laughs> okay, Jim, it's, <laughs> it's. I I guess my point to you, and I appreciate, as I said, the improvements that you've made, the changes to the fence along the west property line in particular, and the fact that you've greened that up instead of trying to close off the windows to the adjacent par property. Um, you've got too much concrete here. And um, even regardless of whether it's a three foot, four and a half, or six foot fence, your approach and your concern is liability um, where you could have a lot more green in that space outside of a movement area, whether it's for a vehicle or for a pedestrian, the one tree you have in your front yard is not, you can't plant it there because that is where your sewer line's going to go and you're not going to plant a tree on top of the sewer line. I think we all know that. Um, and I just, I don't have a plan that I can look at and say I'm comfortable with what you're doing with this landscaping. And I'm concerned because this is, I feel like I've been fighting with you for three different meetings about where to take your project so that I feel comfortable approving it and it's clear to you what my expectations are and clear to staff what I was hoping to see through the approval. And it goes all the way back to now we've got a balcony back on the east side of the existing building when it was really clear at our original approval, there was not going to be anything there for a very specific reason. I don't see people from the third floor coming down those internal stairway, that internal stairway, to enjoy a balcony on that side of the building. I don't see anybody doing that. I just, I'm baffled by that explanation. Um, and Mike, I can understand you're concerned about safety of future tenants and their children there. But part of that is the responsibility of parents to supervise their children if they're not old enough to play safely in the front yard and to take ownership for the whole street. That's part of making Emeryville a safer place is people who live there become responsible not just for their property but for their entire street and what happens on their street, even in neighborhoods that are challenged. And creating a separate walled in space for your future property owners doesn't insist on that responsibility. So I, I can't support a variance in the front yard area and I'm not sure short of 
not getting the variance, how you're going to resolve this design with staff to a satisfactory degree where I feel like this is going to be uh, an improvement. You know, it's, it's emphasizing concrete. The two species of bamboo I'm not concerned about, but planting ivy is not, in my opinion, going to be an attractive treatment of that trellis. It's going to be a maintenance problem eventually for whoever lives there and it won't allow any visibility into your property. It'll become a solid wall, um, which I don't think you really want. I think you want to have people see into the yard so people can tell what's going on and it can be part of that visual experience to the street. Planting the ivy? Speak oh. in the microphone, please. Well, I just... Yeah, I was trying to satisfy you by planting the ivy. That wasn't my idea. Yeah, I think I would have specified something other than ivy because I'm busy pulling ivy out all the time. So, um, but that's part of the deficiency of, in my opinion, of the landscape plan and the lack of information we have to make an informed decision about what you really want to do and the next step you need to go and take with staff to resolve these issues. So I, I guess I wanted to try to clarify and make my concerns known to you so that when you go back to staff in this process, mm -hmm. you can hammer out something that is acceptable. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Yeah, I'm, I, I, I have to echo a lot of what Jim says, and in particular, um, the, the landscaping and you're talking about in that, much of that whole front, now granted, you know, you we've got a little lesson tonight in defining the front yard but in that area in the front of the uh, main larger house you're saying so much of that is going to be concrete you've been talking about liability issues and you don't want the uh, planting strips for uh, the uh, two garages because you're worried about tripping issues but you want to make it kid friendly and so you're paving the whole thing over with concrete it would seem to me that a, a soft lawn area is a much safer area for a kid to play in than hard concrete they, they are running around going at breakneck speed as kids do they trip and fall they break their head open on concrete they trip and fall on, on grass and you know they'll maybe get a bruise or a little grass burn um, so I don't think that all of that paving in the in the front area really makes it that warm inviting place for the kid um, or for, for the families um, I I don't feel I mean we have so many pretty open areas in in yards that don't have enclosed walled off fences where where children live and where children play um, particularly with a with a yard that is as deep as that I don't I don't think a three foot closed fence or a four and a half foot uh, wrought iron fence is you know going to detract from security and safety of the children I would I would certainly I think I you know I'd be happy to go with the four and a half foot and the wrought iron so that in that you know a whole area there to the front of of the rear house with nice lawn and other nice landscaping it would be inviting to look in even though it's private space from the street <clears throat> You wall it off, and then they're not going to see the concrete, but they also wouldn't see any beautiful landscaping. Um, and, you know, I too have real, you know, I don't understand the balcony to nowhere. Um, I've got a lot of problems with this as it currently exists, or currently stands as well, and, and it, it feels like it has been a real kind of a tug of war. Murray? Oh, comment. Buzz. I'm confused. <laughs> I mean, I think we're trying to play landscape architect for the developer, and uh, it just doesn't work. 
I think you just have to say we have certain standards and they're this, 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 and this, and you're not meeting them. Yeah, and one of them is, is, is pervious uh, landscaping because we were moving towards, uh, you know, trying to get stormwater absorption, and we don't have it here. You're right. This whole front is, is, is hard paving. And it would certainly be simple enough to put planter strips in there. Certainly, the certainly where the walkway is into the building, it doesn't need to be more than three and a half feet wide. And uh, you could get quite a bit of planting in there. As far as a six-foot fence, that doesn't bother me. I think it, it perhaps makes the property more desirable for the people that are living there. Although there's certainly something to be said for viewing the street, but since most of the, the, the front building is all above the fence height anyway, so uh, certainly in the front building there's plenty of view in the street, and the back building is far enough away that it probably doesn't matter. Um, you know, security and attractiveness of the actual use of the yard, I think, is encouraged by a solid six-foot fence, but uh, that's my opinion. <laughs> but I don't know how you I don't know how you resolve this. Well, I think I don't think that a solid six foot fence that far in the front setback is appropriate. I think the city has shown that it's really interested in softening and greening up the fronts. It's gone as far as setting up a grant fund for people to take out the concrete and put in transparent and low fences. And I think that in line with the city's desire to see that happen, um, the plan that we're seeing Stuff here doesn't that. accomplish that at all. I think if there is a need for enclosure and privacy, since you don't have much of backyards at all behind the, ba the main building, if you need a private space in the front, it can still be, you can still move that fence back to provide an attractive frontage for people. The way the landscape is drawn, we really can't tell what it's gonna look like there. We need something that shows more accurately and more graphically what your intention is. And I think that however many times this has to come back here or through staff, you're going to keep hearing we want more green and less hardscape, at least in the public, in the public interface there. So um, I would really, um, I, I'm not comfortable with the idea of a variance for a fence in the front setback. I'm not comfortable with the amount of hardscape there. And I also appreciate that you've made changes that have made the plan better and nicer, but I think that you really need to hear what the direction that the city wants to go. And it does want to go for family housing. That's a, that's a great thing. It wants to keep the kids safe, but it wants to provide attractive, visually accessible streetscape and street interaction too. Paul? I'm not going to go into the landscape arena uh, because it's been dealt with <laughs> adequately. <laughs> but uh, there's a sense here that, that uh, this is, uh, that this wants to be at some time in the future, uh, the rear unit anyway, a three unit instead of a two unit. And it seems a little bit to me and perhaps to uh, uh, some of my colleagues, a little bit of a shell game with the stairways and that the impracticality of them, the location of them lends itself more to a three unit complex than it does to the, to being an amenity to the bedrooms or to the living units. So anything that you can do, it looks like this is coming back again. So that anything that you can do in the next iteration to dissuade us that this is indeed going towards a three unit project would be, uh, in my opinion, that would help it get approved. Right. Thanks, Paul. Well, I don't want to belabor this either, but I, I think that, um, again, I commend you. You've made some changes that I think have improved um, the building design, 
but the landscaping is is just not acceptable and we don't have enough information I think to even make a recommendation quite frankly other than go back and redesign it uh, because I believe that the commissioner's position at this point is now that we want to have enough so that we can make directions to Charlie that when an applicant submits the detailed landscape plan with the planting scheme and, and such he has enough direction based on what the commission wants to see that he can go ahead and and approve the landscape plan or ask for modifications and we're not there yet to provide him with that kind of guidance and we definitely need to green up the front and I still would like to see what you're proposing to do in the backyard is it going to be concrete are you looking at a patio with maybe some planting I mean we don't know because we haven't been provided with that information and you have emphasized that as a, a, a important open space for the second unit and we have no information on that so I really strongly recommend that that uh, you provide the Commission with that information chair Jeffrey yes a uh, couple of comments on the first of all on the treatment of the front you may recall that the zoning ordinance was recently amended uh, with various provisions related to stormwater. Peter Schultz Allen brought those amendments to you. I don't recall exactly when it was. It probably was after this project was originally approved, but prior to today, obviously. And today, as a result of those amendments, the zoning ordinance requires wheel strips for driveways and pervious surfaces for driveways and so forth so it's more than just a condition of approval or a desire of staff or desire of the Commission it's the code requirement today and we would I don't think the city the, the staff the Planning Commission the City Council would have adopted those kinds of changes if they were any kind of a liability or anything that wasn't desirable um, second thing I want to say is just to refresh my own memory and for the and for the benefit of the applicant what your direction in the past has been about what you would like to see in terms of preliminary landscape plans with applications if I recall you would like to see a complete uh, a single plan not uh, in working drawings we usually get four or five different sheets we get an irrigation plan and a, a grading plan and a planting plan and you know whatever else you don't want all those you just want one sheet and the sheet would show as I recall trees shrubs ground cover and we any other plants with a general idea of what the species of those plants would be Correct. and where the hardscape is where and the, the materials of it and the materials of the hardscape you also for the entire site for the entire site right and you want to see and and adjacent right-of-way actually and you want to see uh, locations of fences and gates. Um, was there something else? I'm trying I to think, remember. I think that's and general that concept of materials, I would say. And materials, right. Materials fences of fences and gates. And fences, gate material, right. right. Yeah, sort of standard for, stuff. For the basically. entire site. But, for the entire right. site. Okay. Yes. All of the above. <laughs> okay, thank you. That was all I had. Can I ask staff where in the these conditions of approval have you addressed the fence height I didn't see anywhere it specified your recommendation that we don't approve the variance for the fence change. it's in the resolution so nowhere in the condition are we going to specify or need to specify that change what I'm well, trying no, to do is see if we can approve this tonight and have you resolve the well the fence issues. the fence issue uh, if you don't approve the variance for the fence height, we then, don't need to specify. Then they simply that. need to comply with whatever the code requires. Okay. Right. That makes sense. But I'm getting a, well. So none uh, of the fence issues were addressed in the prior approval. Uh, they were raised. They weren't approved then either. Yeah. No, no they they, they've okay. never been approved. This is a different fence design, I think, but it's still you know wasn't approved the then we're not recommending approval the same now. location issue before. Uh, oh uh, there is one, there is one other thing I would like to say and not that I'm necessarily suggesting this but if the applicant is determined to have this six-foot fence it could be moved back so that it's at least 22 and a half feet from the street in which case it would butt into the phase two building 
kind of in the back of that staircase overhang area. And I realized there's a door into a little storage area there on the side, which would then be outside the fence, but that door could easily be relocated around to the back side so that it would be inside the fence. And what that would do is it would enlarge that front area that's outside the fence and it would reduce the area that's inside the fence. But you could still have a six foot fence if you if you wanted to do that. But under if that approach were taken, I'm assuming that that front realm would be landscaped instead of right. being primarily concrete. Yes. Which is what the yes, that would become like a front garden that would be outside the fence, except for the wheel strips of those parking areas. Right. Which would actually also be landscaped. So, do we have a motion to continue this or to approve? I, I would, I'm in, I'm in favor of trying, trying to get some language to approve it this evening. I'm, I thought the consensus was that we were going to send it back, but if, uh, if we all can do this, I'm, I'm ready I'd to, like get some to get some language it, to approve I'd it. I'd like to get it wrapped up this evening. <laughs> what do you think, can. Gail? I think that it sounds like we can give enough direction that we could approve it at this point because it, it as long as it keeps coming back, we're going to find another little thing here and another little mm -hmm. thing there. And it makes more sense to try to wrap it up. Does staff that. feel comfortable catching all of the issues that were raised tonight? Sure. And then we'll just have these discussions at the front counter instead right. of in the council right, chamber. It looks like he, I mean, Maru already caved in, in once. I would, I would, that, that's <laughs> precisely. I would request that any direction be made into conditions of approval. So that you know, any direction that you are giving regarding landscaping, fencing, be, become conditions of approval, so that there is no further negotiation at well, the county. I think the the staff recommendations pretty much touch upon the issues that we talked about, and I think we can move forward on that. And I think we have ad nauseum talked about landscape improvements that I believe you've captured, and you all took quite extensive notes. So I would think that that could be handled through the detailed landscape plan that will be submitted for your review and approval, Charlie. One of the... Th but I do think if you're... Um, they, we need to state what you want regarding landscaping tonight. Okay. On page 7 mm -hmm. under 6A2A, to make changes there. One of the things that we considered on that Salem project, which is a wonderful treatment and a very similar two-car garage frontage, was a trellis. Obviously, we're not going to get the tree where the sewer is going, but they, we had a, there was a trellis that went over the roof of the garage, and uh, it, was, it was a great treatment. There was some vines that came down in one place. Nobody was going to trip over them. It didn't disrupt the vehicle movement, and it would get some green on the front of that sure front so. building. Sure. So it would be nice to add at somewhere in that landscape plan consideration of trellis in the front front of that front building. Actually, it doesn't appear to be shown in the plan view, but if you Planter look... Planter box in one of them, but... Well, if you look at sheet 405 on the phase two drawings, there's something that kind of looks like a trellis over one of the garages. It's like a planter yeah, box. It's a planter, planter box. Planter box, yeah. Uh, well... If you, there, it's in the it's other elevation, too. South oh. elevation. It's a planter box. But it's got little slats on top of it. There's a little pot. And a pot sitting on top of the slats, right. My point is you could have a trellis, you could have a wisteria just to the left of that going up next to the stairway and climbing over the, ter the trellis system. I don't, I don't, it was yeah, one of the things that we pointed out as an option to green up when you didn't have an opportunity to plant. So it shouldn't be there. So I'd like that considered as you resolve this with trellis over garages so as an option yeah. and greening up with shrubs or something that could grow on top of the sewer line mm -hmm. along the eastern property line. Well, from the garage door all the way over to the property line. Right. To green up that whole strip yeah. rather than having it all concrete. And on the other side between the garage door and the stairway, you could at least get a foot and a yeah. half or something. Yeah, and, and I would I would add in, in, not only instead of the concrete there, but I would like to add that 
I would like to see concrete left to a true minimum throughout the entire property. Um, we have a concrete buyback program. Um, and we have, as you were pointing out, Charlie, a stormwater uh, reduction program. And we want maximum amount of, of permeable soil throughout the entire mm -hmm. um, project, including front and, and rear areas. And that would certainly, as far as I can see, help with liability issues for children falling as well, uh, you know, because it's softer. But it, it meets our stormwater issues. Yeah, the, the landscape plan should show the maximum impermeable area so that it's in compliance with storm drain requirements. Which is in the language, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, well, there's no reason why all of the hardscape can't be permeable. Do it you, can be unit pavers. Do you want to try and, and, and give a percentage of the hardscape, the existing hardscape that, or the existing front setback that you want planted? Is that how you can do it? Is a percentage? Hundred percent? No, I mean you can, <laughs> you've got to have some hardscape there for the. For I the, mean, there's well, three, three three driveways, right? Right, but the driveways can be permeable. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it depends on what you mean by landscape. Okay. Um, that's why I said hundred percent. You know, I wasn't really being facetious. You make it hundred percent permeable, I mean, but really still parking a percentage of it will be hardscape. Driveways. Yeah, and driveways can also be permeable. And I mean, too. Roger Bash's entire parking lot is made of pervious concrete. Oh, down the street here mm -hmm. at Linen Life, mm -hmm. the entire parking lot is pervious concrete. Now it's got problems, you know, but issues. it's issues, right? But it's possible to do. Well, how about the first sentence of that landscape provision? We just say prior to the issuance of the billing permit, applicant shall submit plans, blah, 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 approval by the planning director, which minimizes hardscape on the property. Uh, okay. I think you get our point. Sure. Yeah. I trust the applicant gets our point too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that general concept would carry over obviously into the backyard as well. Yeah. Precisely. Exactly. Yeah, which is why I kept saying throughout the entire property. Oh. Yeah, that's a good modified. Yeah, not just the front setback. Okay. I mean, existing concrete is going to be destroyed back there anyway if they when they go to raise the building. It's not mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's not pour any new. And about the side balcony, I mean, if, I guess unless someone else has a strong objection, if that's really what you want. And you think someone's going to come downstairs to go out there? Yeah. I'm I don't tired. Have a fight on that one. So anymore. with that, I unless I hear a strong objection to that side balcony, I'll make a motion for approval with the changes to the condition. I think uh, the side balcony. I think is ridiculous. The door swings out onto it. You can't even get a. You could get one small chair out there. I mean. It, so you're suggesting we take that out? Yeah. Oh. If. You know, it's not crucial. But it's well, I mean, I'll go back to my question to Maru. I didn't want to bring this up, but now that Buzz did, I mean, we've got the staff recommendation, and it is a requested modification in the existing structure, and it's not identified. The balcony. Right. So that's, that 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 is has in to be added, and then we either say yes or no. That's cool. Well, let's forget it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> in case of wait, wait, what? No. I'm balcony. sorry. I'm no, confused. Never mind. <laughs> So you're dropping it too, Buzz? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> see? <all> tired. <laughs> wait, wait. See wait. what's Forest happening? Are we one. saying the balcony? <laughs> the balcony? Is the balcony okay? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yes. That's, that's I, right I think it's silly, but. but. Yeah, I think we all agree it's silly, okay. but we're not going to fight it any okay. longer. You know, if you got rid of that staircase, you could make that bedroom bigger. But <laughs> never <Two>. mind. <laughs> up to the balcony. That's yeah, right. Yeah, but then you go up to the so bedroom through the kitchen. Okay, so I made a motion. To to okay, do we have a second? Second. Thanks, Murray. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we had Commissioner Martins and Commissioner Kane seconded. And let me just make sure I've got the revisions. The only thing you're revising, unless I missed something, 
is condition of approval 6A2A. Correct. And you're saying trellises over the garage door should be considered as an option. There should be green shrubs over the sewer line on the east property line, uh, you know, whether or not there's trees there and also between. The backyard should ha be green. Yeah. The entire entire property and, 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 as green and as possible. And also mentioned the west side of the of the driveway between that and the walkway should be green and actually the entire lot right should good. minimize hardscape okay. there we go yeah. including that's the back it side. that's it okay oh. and so other than that on the staff recommendation yeah. six yes on the increase to the height uh yes on the new stairs in the back yes on the marginal change in the footprint on the front building modification of the design um Yes. No on the six foot front fence in the front yard. No on the wait. Uh, no on the chain on the la change in the landscaping. Well, we've addressed landscaping, so everything that makes sense. That everything that's in that table as is the metal roof. No. Okay. Yeah. So it's basically approving all the things that are said in this table with modifications to condition six A two A. Right. right. And, and and adding the approval of the balcony, I guess, since we've gotten worn down on that. It's already in there. It's already in there. There's no well, change there. The plans are referenced in the conditions, right. and the balcony is shown on the plans. Okay. Okay, let's take the roll here. All right, Commissioner Cardoza. Aye. Commissioner Donaldson. Aye. Commissioner Germain. Aye. Commissioner Kane. Aye. Commissioner Troiting. Aye. Vice Chair Martin. Aye. Chair Jeffrey. Aye. Seven ayes. The application is approved. This decision is appealable to the City Council within 15 days. Good luck working with the City. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or vice versa. Good luck, staff. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, that wraps up our public hearings for this evening. Um, are there any Commissioner comments? Not a one. Okay, any other? And no one, great. Okay, I move adjournment. I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> oh. no, it's hey, we got out in two thirds of the happened. time of last month. <laughs> oh, I was going to bring it to Too late. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> <laughs> There's never a big comment. Oh, good. Hey, one, one cookie. Anyone want the last oatmeal cookie? <laughs> Thank you.